Hey everyone, welcome to Monday Night Team Call. I'm Jamie Haskin. I'm a Diamond Ambassador and I'm really excited to chat with all of you guys. Uh, we're going to be diving into uh, several things, but it's going to be connecting questions with coaching, with leading, with basically working with others. So don't let the word coaching scare you or anything like that. Um, but it is something that I, I do love talking about and I'm going to pull some content from, um, a book that I found extremely valuable as well. So let me Lee, I'll, I'll show you that later here. Let me, uh, oh my goodness, I haven't used a PowerPoint in a while. One second. I'm going to screen record or screen share, excuse me, and pop this right up. And hopefully do it accurately. Why is this being weird? Okay. Present. There we go. Okay. So let's get started. I want to first and foremost say that leading with questions this whole topic around here is definitely um, not something I'm claiming to be an expert in by any means. I feel like there's a lot of people out there that are a lot better than me. Um, so I am definitely always learning and I find so much value in this topic, which is why I do love talking about it and why I think it's important to be intentional with it. So uh, we are going to move right in here. Guys. Okay. That all looks good, right? Amanda, I can see you. All looks good. Okay. So let's first talk about why this is even important, right? Um, you, many of you have probably heard the quote, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care, right? So by John Maxwell. And there's, there's reasons why we want to be intentional with asking good questions. For one, we connect better with people, right? It's really just being able to connect. And we know that building relationships in this business is so important. So to be able to dig in, we have to be able to connect. We have to understand. We have to seek to understand better. We can't expect or think that we're at the experts at everything, right? So the best way you can help someone is by leaning in with good questions. It shows that you care about people and it helps you to seek and look for answers, right? To look for more beyond just the surface, more beyond just what you're being told. Um, it, it helps lead other people to a why, a why of what's going on or why they feel this way or why they feel stuck or whatever it is, right? It helps you are able to help other people move forward into that. So you're not only understanding them, but you're helping them come to uh, an understanding, right? It assists in uncovering the solutions that you are looking for. Uh, sometimes we can fall into the trap, and I'm going to talk about this later, of, of maybe making assumptions or thinking that one thing is the problem and here's the solutions. But if we don't ask enough questions or the right questions, we might be um, kind of focused in one area when maybe we should be diving into another area. And then, um, of course, it helps us learn. It helps us work together and cultivate ideas. I know when I get talking with some people and, you know, asking questions and we're going back and forth, it helps me grow and learn. It helps, you know, we kind of collaborate together on things, right? This is like, this is a, a relationship. It's back and forth. It's just not uh, this manager telling someone what to do, right? It's, it's a relationship amongst all this. So it's really important. And then before the question, what are, what are your, what's your thought process with all this? I like talking about this because I think it's important to kind of be thinking in the background, right? You want to be curious. It's, it's kind of really what it all comes down to. You'll kind of have more questions pop in your head if you are actually genuinely curious about what is going on, right? You want to prepare to listen, the hard thing with, um, I think any of us can maybe fall into this trap. I know I have before, but sometimes we can get so caught up in what the next question you want to ask, or maybe what you want to say in response or what you think that you want to make sure you talk about. And we're more focused on what we want to say than on what is actually being said. So prepare yourself to actually listen for the answers and not get caught up in what you're going to do next, right? 
Um, you're naturally thinking when you, when you are posed with a problem or whatever is going on, you're thinking, okay, where is this coming from? Right. This helps you kind of formulate your questions that you want to ask. You want to, this is goes back to being curious, right? You don't want to assume what an answer is. You don't want to assume what someone is or is not doing. You don't want to assume what their intention even is. Right. Um, and, and one thing that helps me, I think with, genuinely leaning into some of this is I always try and assume the best in people. And I always try and look at other sides of things. It's something that I, I tend to do very quickly and easily. And I, if I think for some people, you might find it more easy than, than others. And if that doesn't come natural to you, then you can still lean into that and be intentional in that. So try not to jump to assumptions or conclusions or judging people and try and give the benefit of the doubt. Try and look at both sides to a situation. Um, you might want to be thinking, you know, is there more to this? Is there more that I don't understand yet? Right. And, and you want to engage and you want to be intent attentive during this, this, you know, any interaction, right. Goes back to what I was saying earlier in terms of not just constantly thinking about what you want, out of this or what you want to say or what you want to happen, but you want to engage with someone and you want to be attentive to what they are saying and what they are feeling, right? You have intuitions and in some of that as well. All right. So what I think is super helpful in terms of being able to ask the questions that's going to lead to figuring out the problems and lead to the solutions, right? Versus just straight up, okay, this is what I see what's wrong right now. And this is how you can fix it. And, and going into just kind of hurting people along, right? <laughs> or, or whatever. The problem with that though, and I know it's, it's sometimes easier and quicker to do, right? But it could put someone on the defense. Maybe it could just look like, you know, this is your agenda, right? And it, and it potentially could um, put them in a space where maybe they feel defensive or they want to protect themselves or protect their habits or their comfort and stay where they want to stay, right? It doesn't promote their own problem solving. It doesn't promote um, them being able to dig into it. And it certainly doesn't allow you to get the bigger picture of what is going on right? It's, it's, you're getting kind of surface level if without asking questions and digging in versus if you do ask the good questions, then, um, it, it allows the other person to perhaps identify their own problem, right? You can ask the questions to lead the conversation so they can share what's going on. They can, they know what, what the problem is. They likely know way more than you do. Right. And, and then they are more likely to move forward and you can help them find perhaps solutions that they will be more likely to commit to if they are coming up with those, right. If you're asking the questions to help lead them in that direction, and they might be more receptive and more open to hearing more from you as well. And, you know, they share what, when they share what they're willing to do to move forward, when they share their ideas for solutions, I feel like we are in a better space then to gauge where their baseline is, where they're at. And then you can just maybe help a little bit more in terms of encouragement or challenging them to do a little bit more. But if you don't know where what they want to do, what they want out of this, what their baseline is, then you could be shooting way far off in terms of how much you're trying to challenge them. You need to, you need to meet them and help them do just a little bit more. All right. So this content I want to share is coming. Some of it is coming from this book that I think is super helpful. So if you want to get it, it's called the coaching habit. Um, if you can see me, otherwise, uh, I will, well, I'll show you at the end. But it's the coaching habit, say less, ask more, and change the way you lead forever. It's by Michael Bungay Stanier. Um, super helpful, easy read, uh, and asks kind of like moves you forward to creating good coaching habits. So I'm going to highlight kind of some thoughts I had as well as what pulled together through some things that he said. And I kind of created it in a, I think it's 10 steps here that I, that I made out of it. So one is... As you are, and again, don't be afraid of like a coaching or think, well, I don't got anyone to coach yet. Don't tune me out. If you don't have people that you are actively coaching, you can lead yourself in all of these things first and also 
um, you will be helping people move forward. It's again, it's connecting with the people, it's linking arms with people who want to do this with you. So coaching is just a word for really running together. Um, and being, but we want to be intentional on this. So first and foremost, make sure to ask one question at a time. You don't, you have, sometimes you have, might have a lot of questions bubbling and you think you might have a lot of answers to what's going on and, and you want to help someone move forward and we can word vomit a million questions at someone, or this can apply to, you know, when you're following up with someone with a potential or with just a product user. If you ask too many questions, you're not going to, you're in a hard time getting a straightforward answer or getting them to answer what you really, um, in an effective way, I should say, to move the conversation forward. So be direct. Don't be passive. If you kind of skirt around it or don't use it actually in a form of a question, then it can easily be bypassed. So make sure you're actually asking a question. So when you would write it out, would it have a question mark at the end? What is a good question? And then bite your tongue. You need to wait for an answer. You have to be okay with the silence. Okay. Resist the urge to fill that in. It's okay. If there's a little bit of silence. Okay. And it can be uncomfortable, but you need to, to pause and let that person answer and not interrupt them. Right. Okay. Second thing is to listen. And I talked about this a little bit already, but resist the urge to think of what you want to say next and actually listen after you ask a question. So easier said when you're, you know, maybe having a typing back and forth conversation, then you can read that, right? And you have more time. But if you're engaging on a phone call and you guys should be getting on the phone, you should be talking to people on the phone, especially when you're helping someone move forward in this business. So listen after you ask the question. And if it helps, you can write down any quick thoughts you have or questions or something you want to circle back to. I just did that the other day on a three-way call that I had because she was going in depth about several things and I, I didn't want to miss something, right? Of coming back to something to be able to speak on. So I just really quick made a couple notes and then I kept engaging as best as I could, right? And just listening to what she had to say. Number three, a question that is good to ask is what's on your mind? And it's just an opening question. Um, it opens the door to discuss something that maybe really matters instead of, you know, if you get on the phone, you feel like you have to make small talk or just ask about whatever, but this allows you to kind of skip some of that small talk and just go into feeling them out of what's really going on for them. And it's, it opens the door for something, like I said, that, that might be very important in what they're focusing on right now. Number four, things that are maybe heavy talks or difficult, or maybe even like you feel like you have to confront a little bit and it makes you nervous or whatever. Um, to lessen the heaviness, you can open with questions like these. So out of curiosity or to help me understand better, you know, maybe how, how come this didn't happen or whatever, just so I know, you know, so you can always kind of open a question in a way you can First and foremost, you guys, it's okay to ask the questions that you might feel a little uncomfortable, but if it's going to help someone learn and grow, right? We can't, um, there's a quote that's coming later that I don't have memorized, so I will point it out here in a little bit, but you can't help someone move forward if we're just, you know, cheerleading and, and not wanting to help highlight things that might be hurting them or that they need to help grow through, right? So here are some questions to help with that. Number five, and what else? So this is a question that while someone is talking, maybe you, you know, they have already started indulging or is that the right word? Started saying something about um, what is going wrong or whatever they're talking about. And you can say, and what else? And it allows space for them to keep going for you to kind of dive deeper. Um, but what I love is it creates wisdom. And this is a quote from the book here. It creates more wisdom, more insights more self-awareness, more possibilities. So if they are digging in more to what's really going on, you're going to have more insight to what's going on. They will have more self-awareness, right? It opens up the possibilities for better solutions, right? To find the real problem of what is going on. 
and it helps you tame, this is his quote here, the advice monster, right? Trying to go straight into, okay, they said one thing, now I have, here's my, here's the solution for you. I got the solution, right? So you want to avoid jumping into that too quickly. Number six, the real problem. So you want to focus on what the real problem is and not just the first problem that comes your way. And sometimes that's hard to do. You get a first problem and you think, okay, here's what we have to run with. Here's, you know, I can tag them in this and third-party validation validations here. And this is where we're going to go with it, but try and move forward with, you know, and the what else and the things that are going to help you um, uncover something beyond maybe that first, the first problem, maybe someone has, um, is struggling, you know, they're not reaching out or they're not getting their IPA done. Right. Um, maybe they, uh, don't feel like they have enough time. Um, and you can go into like solutions right there for time. Um, and, and there's a lot of things you can cover in that, but if you keep digging in, uh, and you're asking the questions, maybe you uncover that um, it's a little bit of time, but maybe there's something more rooted in that. Maybe they're spending all their time doing research on something because they feel like they have to be an expert at it, or maybe they're, you know, whatever it is, maybe they're worried about what people think. And so they're actually holding back from the reach outs, um, whatever. So keep, keep digging in to uncover anything a little bit deeper. And a really good question is what's the real challenge for you here? So sometimes maybe they'll be telling you a lot of things, um, but you need to kind of rein it back in, or you want to dive a little deeper. So ask them, ask, don't, don't try and decipher it or guess, just ask what's the real challenge for you here. All right. And number seven, avoid the rabbit hole. So when we good, good, good things to say is the tell me more and what else and, and dive deeper. Right. But we don't want to go so far where it's just a continual um, thing that gets completely off track. Right. I mean, we've all, you know, you can get in these conversations that maybe last too long and maybe it goes into um, more of a counseling session or maybe gossip or maybe just complaining about someone or complaining about something or um, worries or home life, something that's completely unrelated, whatever it is, right? So it could even about, be about what everybody else should be doing. And it could be legit things, right? But a lot of this can be disguised as coaching. You feel like you're coaching. You really, really connect, right? You help them feel better about something. You, you figure out what is really bothering them and you're you're diving and you're connecting and it feels like you're, you're really coaching and doing a good job, but it might not be as effective, right? If, if it's kind of gone, gone down the rabbit hole here. So instead you can kind of rein that in before you get to that hour mark on the phone call, you got to guard your time, right? And you can ask the question, you can refocus with what I said earlier, what's the real challenge for you here? So you can kind of pause the conversation, make sure you, you can kind of rein it back in and help them to refocus on, on them on what's, what, what's really going on for, for them right now. Number eight, finding the backstory and um, it's really good examples of changing your whys to what's. So instead of, you know, you're trying to dig in, what's, what's the backstory to this? What's, what's behind here, all that kind of stuff. But instead of, saying things like, why did you do that? Or why didn't you do that? Right. You can say, what were you hoping for? Why did you think this was a good idea? What made you choose this course of action? Why are you bothering with this? Why are you really focusing on this over here? What's important to you here? You can, instead of why aren't you doing your IPA when you said you were going to commit to it? Right. That's like real, real life example, you know, in terms of like what we do. Right. Or you can change that to what's holding you back from moving forward with this. So it takes kind of people off the defense and digs in a little bit more um, with more empathy, with more wanting to know more about them and what's going on with them versus perhaps accusatory or your agenda, right? I, I think that, I mean, I can see the difference. I'm sure you guys can see that difference with just kind of the feel of those questions, right? 
Number nine, what do you want? So you can give them the floor. Just ask them, what do they want out of this? What do they want to happen? Where do you want this to go, right? This can lead to your why. Just another good question to have, to be intentional of asking so that you guys can be on the same page. And when you're on the same page, you can best help someone move forward. You can remind them of where they want to go. You can help cast a better and bigger vision. I'm so thankful I had vision cast in me that to me that was much bigger than what I initially wanted, right? So you can meet them where they're at and you can show them a little bit more. You can better help them with action steps if you know what they actually want, right? So make sure to ask, don't skip that. And number 10, when they ask for advice, this is when you can stop. Um, sometimes I think, and I fall into this very, very easily. You know, if you ask, if you're asked for advice, then it's like, okay, well, here's, here's the advice or here's what I know. Right. Um, but if you can stop and pause and resist that advice monster, um, and just wait a minute to ask the questions. Right. And the goal is not to never give advice. That's not to never share your wisdom and knowledge because that's very, very important. Um, but it's to get better at having people find their own answers or at the least get better at finding the real problem, digging in and make sure you make sure you know where you're going with this before you just word vomit all the advice, right? So asking, hey, that's a great question. There was a typo there. Um, I have some ideas, which I'll share with you. But before I do, what are your first thoughts? Okay. And that's a great way to help that they can have the space to dig in, share what they're thinking. And I found many, many times that that person has had a lot of great thoughts themselves and they have a lot of answers themselves in terms of what's going on and what they could do. And, you know, sometimes they just needed that sounding board. And sometimes I can step in and offer a little bit more perspective or advice. Um, and after that, you ask that question, then you can ask again, that's great. So validate what they said. What else could you do? So he, a big proponent of keeping them moving forward. What else can you do? What else are they thinking about? What else can they come up with? What else is going on? Right. And then, um, after, well, I'll wait one second for that. So what can be hard with doing those things? Um, I think the biggest thing is it's, it can be a lot faster to just go right to the answers, right? It is so much faster to just give someone the answer and move on, right? The conversation's quicker. You feel like you've, you already knew what you want to say anyway. So if you just say it, then you're done. Right. But it's not what's best for that person. Um, I know for me, chores with really young kids, sometimes it's faster just to do it yourself, but that's not going to teach them, right? That's not going to help them um, learn a skill. Um, in this case, that's not going to help someone maybe think for themselves or again, allow you to better understand them as well. It's a two-way street with that. So, um, and when you jump to that advice, like I said, sometimes you might um, assume, you know, the real question, you might assume you're providing the best answer, but maybe you haven't dug into what the real question is, right? And, until you've asked the questions. And then after you do that, after you say what else a couple times, then and only then can you actually offer that advice and that wisdom and that knowledge that is also very, very important. And they, they do want that from you. So um, just an order of operations there. Um, action with reflection. So this was super interesting. I wanted to share, um, that I learned it was it talked about when people best learn something. Um, is it, you know, when they're hearing the information, is it when you tell them something, is it when they just watch something and when they take action and do it? And what is actually true is you create new neural pathways and you actually start learning, only when you have a chance to recall and reflect on what just happened. So it is so crazy important that we not only take action, but we reflect on what is going on. We reflect on what we're learning, on the information that sticks out to us and create space for those learning moments by asking questions like, what was most useful for you? How did you learn through that? 
experience or that problem or that whatever, right? What have you learned since we last talked? Could be a question that you could ask from maybe your last time you guys connected. Maybe there was some action steps put into place. Maybe they're going to work on something and you can, um, you can ask, what have you learned since then? as you went through that process, right? So taking the time to maybe journal, um, reflect on what's going on, reflect on what you're learning versus I know I fall into the trap a lot of just jumping from one thing to the next, right? I know life is busy, um, but I thought that was very interesting on actually creating those new neural pathways. All right. So I'm going to allow just a couple minutes. So I'll go through these fast. These are just the extra couple slides that I wanted to throw some questions in for you guys. So that was kind of the process of going through specifically coaching a little bit and working with others. Right. And here are just some questions in general. I want, I threw together on a thing. Um, this one's specifically, they just kind of came to mind about work and time. Um, I love this quote. I, forgot to write down the author or the who said it, I mean, um, but it's a yes is nothing without the no that gives it boundaries and form. Isn't that interesting, right? We can't say yes to everything. A yes doesn't matter if we don't um, protect it with saying no to other things, right? How easy is it to set that aside um, or not do something that you said you were going to do if you have no boundaries with the no's? So some questions are just on there in terms of asking yourself. Obviously, you can ask other people. Um, and all of this content you can really use to coach yourself as well. So am I being consistent in the time and days I've committed to grow my business? Am I, am I being intentional in the time that I have? Where are my time wasters? Can I delegate something or ask for help in a different spot? Um, can I adjust my work hours? Do I need to time block differently? Right? If I'm saying yes to this, then what am I saying no to? So maybe you you did commit to something with this business, but you said yes to something else. And now you're saying no to an aspect of your business that you committed. So what are you swapping? Um, and then what do you want out of this business? What could be what could fully being committed to this look like? Would that change anything? Um, questions for coaching yourself. This thing is in the way and it's annoying. I don't think I can move it. Okay. Hopefully you guys don't see that. Um, questions for coaching yourself. I'm not going to read through all of these for the sake of time. So you guys can write some down, take a picture. Um, I'll share the slideshow as well. So you guys will have access to this. Um, but take the time to be reflective for yourself in terms of what is, you know, utilizing your strengths, how you're learning and growing, um, your standards, how can you grow your leadership, things like that. And then for coaching others, um, uh, this is the quote I wanted to come back to. If someone is going down the wrong road, he doesn't need motivation to speed him up. What he needs is education to turn him around by Jim Rohn. And that is why we sh should want to lean into sometimes what might feel like a hard question. I'm not saying it is a hard question, um, but I think sometimes it can come across that way um, at times. But if you have the right heart and you're wanting the best for people, um, you're helping them lean into what's going well or what is not. If they're going down a wrong road or if there's uh, a big block in their way that they're not seeing, then you get to help them um, and not just keep cheering them on to keep going and, you know, tell them to keep going faster on something that they're doing. Right. Um, so questions to coach, there's some in here. Uh, I'm not going to read through them all right now, but again, you can take a picture or look at this later and we're going to wrap up. So I just want to encourage you guys to utilize any of these again. This is, I mean, you can take just one thing from this, even, um, what is most useful to you? What is going to be helpful to move forward. If there is a question, if there is an order up of operation, if there's something you can tweak in creating better habits with coaching yourself, with coaching others, because being intentional in that, be intentional in asking questions that is empowering, right? It can help you move forward, especially if you ever feel in a rut or feel like you're just going through the motions, just checking something off your checklist. 
um, ask yourself those questions, lean into it, lean in, use, um, you know, ask your people the questions to help them move forward, right? It promotes the intentionality and, and promotes the forward thinking, um, being solution oriented, which is so important. And it is a catalyst to the right action and growth that you need for your business. So thanks for tuning in again, you guys, I'm going to stop the share. And I'm assuming you could see me a little bit, but if not here again, is that book, I will quick show it. Um, the coaching habit and thank you for being on tonight. I didn't get to see any comments today because of the slideshow. That's the one bad thing for that. So, um, hopefully that was helpful. I will again, share the slideshow. So you'll have access to all of that. And, um, yeah, thanks for being on tonight. See you guys later.